What's going on guys? Ben with LiftedImports.com. Today I want to share with you a couple of additional things that you may want to consider adding to your build list if you're planning to lift your Subaru. I know it seems like all you need to do is just get a lift kit and you'll be set and ready to hit the trails. But I want to share with you some different accessories and different parts that added even more confidence and capability on the trails than possibly even my lift kit. And I'll share those with you and give you an idea of what they might be for and if they might be right for you. I know it might be tempting to just throw the cheapest lift kit on your Subaru and then think, okay, it's ready to go. Let's hit these trails and go from there. But I'm gonna share with you some things that I think will greatly enhance your off-road experience without really killing your budget. Yes, this stuff, it's, it's expensive, but it's not gonna bankrupt you. Um, unfortunately, off-roading is just an expensive thing. It's an expensive hobby. There's really no way around that. But most of this stuff is still pretty affordable for the average person that works hard and budgets their money correctly. So in addition to your lift kit, I absolutely would be looking at getting at least an all-terrain tire. If your car has all seasons on it currently, you're definitely gonna wanna trade those in and jump over to an all-terrain. And by trade in, I don't mean actually trade them, I just mean get rid of those and buy your all-terrains. An all-terrain tire is probably gonna be the biggest game changer for not only grip, but durability. So you're gonna be able to climb up more stuff, grip more surfaces, and you're not gonna have to worry about losing a tire on the trail to some little sharp rock or something like that. Yes, you can still damage all-terrain tires, but they are going to be one of the most notable game changers when you head out on the trails with your lifted Subarus. For me, that's a non-negotiable. If you wanna hit the trails in your Subaru, that is one of the first modifications I'm doing. I'm almost never gonna lift a Subaru without already having all-terrain tires ready to go for it. Okay, so you've got your all-terrain tires, your Subaru's lifted. What else could you add to the car to make it just a little bit more capable and durable on the trails? The next thing I would add would be a set of good skid plates. At minimum, I would run a front skid plate, so something to protect the engine itself from oil pan damage. Now, if you have an automatic transmission, I would also add a transmission pan skid plate for your Subaru to make sure that you don't completely damage everything up inside of it and toast your transmission. Now there's two great companies that make skid plates. Anderson Design and Fabrication makes skid plates and then Primitive Racing also makes skid plates. They're both great, can't make a bad choice with either of them, I've run both of them. Can't make a bad decision with either of the two. Now skid plates, in my opinion, are the biggest thing that gave me more confidence to take my Subaru on things that looked like they might be just on the edge of something that my vehicle could handle. Now we obviously don't want to send our Subaru into something that's just going to annihilate it, but the level of peace of mind that I experience when I'm out on the trails, knowing that I have skid plates under the car, it's like I drive the car completely different. I have no stress about, you know, what might happen to the vehicle. I can just I can just go, you know, no problem at all. Not only will skid plates give you that confidence, but they can absolutely save you thousands of dollars. There's tons of people that have been out there who have smacked their oil pan and just completely drained the engine of oil. And for whatever reason, maybe they didn't know any better. They had no clue that they had just drained all the oil out of their Subaru and completely oil starved it. Now you don't even necessarily have to drain the oil out of the oil pan to oil starve it. All you gotta do is smack that oil pan hard enough to break the oil pickup tube. And now the Subaru can't even pull oil up into the engine and you're gonna end up with pretty catastrophic short block failure really quickly. It doesn't take a whole lot of oil starvation to completely annihilate the rod bearings and you're gonna need a full rebuild in short order if that's something that happens to you and you don't shut the car off in time. Me personally, I prefer to just pay about four to six hundred dollars in skid plates and know that my car is protected and not have to worry about it. You might be a little bit more uh, daring than me, but I'm not that guy. <laughs> so absolutely consider jumping over and getting a set of skid plates. You can do a rear diff skid plate if you want. 
I don't think it's a must have for a lot of people. There are benefits to it, but if you can only afford two of them, I'm recommending the front skid and then the transmission skid plate. Those are the two that I run and it's absolutely what I would recommend most people put on their vehicles. Okay, the next thing that I think is one of the biggest game changers with off-road Subarus is gonna be a Torque Masters Torque Locker. The Torque Locker basically connects your passenger and your driver axles and locks them together so that you don't have one wheel that's up off the ground spinning doing nothing while you have a wheel that's down on the ground that's not spinning because open differentials are designed to where if you have one tire that is stuck and one tire that has less resistance the tire with less resistance is where the power gets delivered to sounds great but when you really get out there and put that into practice it's the last thing you want off-road you need both wheels to be able to turn at the same time and get you unstuck from whatever you're in now the torque locker is not something that you can just you know willy-nilly install in your car in 20 minutes you definitely need to pull the differential out you're gonna have to do a little bit of work any good mechanic should be able to do that job for you relatively inexpensively torque lockers are definitely not cheap but they are 100% worth the money in my opinion. I paid about 460 bucks for mine and couldn't be happier. I absolutely love it. They do click at low speeds when you're turning because the locker itself has to ratchet as you are turning. If you hear the clicking noises, that just means the locker is working the way it should. If off-road capability is important to you, you absolutely need to be looking for a torque locker for your Subaru. They make them for pretty much all the current Subarus. They make them for all the older Subarus with the R160 diffs. If you have a limited slip diff, you're gonna need to source an open diff somewhere because they drop into open diffs. You can't put them into a carrier that is a limited slip but that's a pretty rare case anyways. Okay, okay, so that, that's a little bit long-winded, but torque locker, 100% for off-road capability. You need to buy one, you need to be running one, you will thank me later. And then the next two things that I'm gonna recommend are things that you can probably do yourself for little or no money at all. Now, the first thing, speaking of the torque locker and changing out the differential. The first thing is gonna be a rear diff breather extension tube. Now, the Subaru rear diffs, they come with a little breather cap on them. Those breather caps always get clogged with mud and they also will absolutely let water in when you get deep enough for long enough. You can. 100% take on water into your diff. Now what you can do and what I've done and a lot of other people have done is when you install your torque locker or you can do this even if you're not installing a torque locker but you will have to pull your diff out. You'll pull the back plate off of your diff and you're going to basically drill out a hole. You're going to take the hole that the stock breather cap is installed in. You're going to take that cap out drill it out and then you're going to get a barbed hose fitting that can fit in there and you're going to make sure that you get a tap that you can go in and tap the same threads as the barbed hose fitting that you've purchased screw that in with some plumber's tape and now you're going to take some silicone tubing that fits on that barbed fitting and you can route that silicone tubing anywhere you want you can route it up into the spare tire well all i did personally was I poked a little bit of a hole in my spare tire plug because you know these cars they have drain plugs in them that are usually just rubber you can poke a little hole run that silicone tubing put some kind of a filter on the end of it I just used an old like motorcycle fuel filter just put that on the end of it to make sure nothing got down inside of it bam no problems now what that does is it just makes sure that there's no entry point into the differential but it still lets the diff breathe so your differentials they heat up and the gear oil in there definitely expands 
as the gears heat up from regular driving. You want to make sure that when that expansion happens, that air can escape out of the differential and not cause issues. Now that doesn't cost a lot of money. The tap is going to be what costs the most, but aside from that, you know, you may be looking at like spending 35 bucks. The next thing that you can do that can make your Subaru much more capable off-road is to relocate your ECU. Now, in most cases, the Subaru ECU is located in the passenger floorboard, which is the worst possible place that an ECU can be located. Now, I don't know about newer Subarus where the ECUs are located, but I will say that on every Subaru I've owned, they've been in that floorboard, and I have always taken them. And you can, it's, it's this simple, you can literally unbolt them, you unbolt them from this bracket, then they, they have enough wiring on them to where you don't have to splice anything. You're not doing anything other than physically picking this thing up. And then what I did was I just took a Dremel and cut a little slot in the back of my glove box, fed it up in there and it just sits in my glove box safe and sound so that if I ever get in a situation where my car takes on a little bit of water, which it has. I did my ECU relocation in this Forester and within, I wanna say it was like a month and a half later, I ended up accidentally getting stuck in a little pond and took on about probably a foot of water right where the ECU would have been it 100% saved my butt. If you drown the ECU and fry it, you are looking at a very expensive situation. So you'll wanna do a little bit of research on where your ECU is and make sure that it's safe. Unbolt it, make sure it has enough wire loom attached to it to where you could relocate it to a higher point. But that is something you can do that will give you just a little bit more peace of mind. So consider doing that. I've done it and it, it absolutely saved my butt. So those are just a few things that you can consider either doing or installing on your Subaru. These are all investments that can greatly enhance the off-road capability and give you just a little bit more confidence when you're out on the trails. If you have questions about any of these mods or parts, feel free to leave uh, a question in the comments. I would greatly appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. You can also head over to the liftedimports.com website, check out all the stuff we got over there. Until next time, I will see you guys out on the trail and I hope you have a fantastic day.